indirect protein. Do we count it? Do we not count it? So what is an incomplete source of protein? Incomplete source of protein is protein that comes from like rice, breads, pastas, those things that you eat that have protein in them, but aren't really complete sources of protein. Those are incomplete proteins. Complete proteins contain all of the amino acids that we need to put on muscle. So what are those complete sources of protein? Chicken, fish, whey protein powder, eggs, egg whites, Greek yogurt, those types of beef, those types of foods contain all of the amino acids that we need to stimulate muscle protein synthesis. So why is this important for us? Every three to five hours when you're trying to build muscle, you need to consume a complete source of protein in order to give your body the raw building blocks it needs to build as much muscle as possible. So if you're having a lot of your protein from indirect protein sources, it's missing the nine essential that you need to stimulate muscle protein synthesis. Those nine essential amino acids, I'm going to butcher the name, so just bear with me here, are phenylalanine, <laughs> uh, valine, threonine, uh, tryptophan, isoleucine, leucine, histidine, lysine, and methanoanine. Again, probably butchered them, but you get the idea. Those are the nine essential that you need every three to five hours to spike muscle protein synthesis or to give your body the raw building blocks it needs to put on muscle mass. So with that out of the way, this issue really becomes an issue when you're in a calorie surplus. When you're in a calorie surplus, a lot of the times you're going to be getting a lot of your protein intake from incomplete protein sources because obviously you're having more breads, pastas, all those foods that have those indirect protein sources. So now when we're trying to spike muscle protein synthesis and get these nine essentials in every meal, what do we do? Well, you can take two incomplete protein sources, combine them together and get it complete. So for example, something like rice and beans, there are certain amino acids in the rice, certain amino acids in the beans. And when you combine them together, you get those complete protein sources. However, I don't like to rely on that. I don't like to have my clients rely on that. I prefer to have protein, a complete protein source with the incomplete protein source every meal in order to ensure that I'm giving my body the exact raw ingredients it needs to build as much muscle as possible. Now, how do we make these complete protein sources in all these meals? Like I said, you can combine two incomplete protein sources. You can add protein to it, like a complete protein source to an incomplete meal. Um, and if you're a vegan, you can even have amino acids or like um, a branch chain amino acid or an essential amino acid complex with your meals to ensure you're getting those raw building blocks. The question now and the problem with all this is, do you count those incomplete protein sources? So for example, if I'm having a cup of rice, and I don't know how you know how much grams of protein is in a cup of rice, but if I'm having a cup of rice, do I have to count the two, three, four grams of protein in that rice? Does that four grams of protein count toward my total for the day. And this really becomes an issue when you're in a calorie surplus because you're having more of those foods. You're having more carbs when you're in a calorie surplus, more breads, pastas, potatoes, all those things. So now sometimes you'll find if you need a meal that has 50 grams of protein and you know, you're having a boatload of rice, 10 grams of that is going to come from the rice. Is that ideal for building muscle? Well, you have to count all sources of protein that you get for sure. But what I like to recommend for myself and for my clients, what I like to do is I always start everybody at about a gram per pound of body weight. Again, give or take the person. So that's going to cover just your basis. But now in a calorie surplus, we want to make sure we have insurance and protein insurance to ensure that we're getting all the essential amino acids needed to build as much muscle as possible. So what I like to do is I like to give a little bit more protein so around one gram is the minimum to around 1.25 is the amount that I think is necessary to give your body the insurance where you're still giving yourself the most amount of essential amino acids to build and spike muscle protein synthesis every three to five hours. So I hope I didn't overcomplicate this for you. Again, again, the basic thing here is, is that you want to make sure that you're getting your essential amino acids in every three to five hours to build as much muscle as possible. All right. This was Anthony, AB Fitness Center, and I'll catch you on the next one.
If you enjoyed this, drop a like, a comment, and if you are looking for a coach and a nutritionist, visit our profile. We would love to help you out today.